we're going to be looking at the energy stored in a capacitor. I will also be describing some of its uses. The energy stored in a capacitor is found from the area under a voltage charge graph. And if you recall, the equation for a capacitor is given by Q equals CV, where Q is the charge stored on the capacitor. C is the capacitance of a capacitor, which is a constant for a given capacitor. And V is the voltage across the capacitor. And as C is a constant, we can say Q charge stored is directly proportional to the voltage across it. And so if we were to plot a graph of voltage against charge, we'd get a straight line through the origin. To get the area under this graph, we would take the area of a triangle, and so that is a half base times height. So half of the base is our charge stored, Q, times our height, which is our voltage V. So we can say the energy stored in the capacitor is equal to a half QV. We can also get another equation for the energy stored in a capacitor in terms of C and V. So we can substitute this equation for charge stored into here. So substitute for Q. So we'll get half CV times V. So that is a half CV squared. As the capacitance C is a constant for a capacitor, we can then see that the energy stored in a capacitor is directly proportional to the voltage squared. So that means if we double the voltage across the capacitor, then the energy stored will be 2 squared, that is 4 times greater. And that's because if we double the voltage across the capacitor, the charge stored on the capacitor will also double. So you have a double effect on the charge stored and the voltage. So you'll have four times the energy stored. So the capacitor stores energy when it's being charged from a battery. And so the energy supplied by the battery is given by QV total charge flowing from the battery times the voltage potential difference across the battery. And we know the energy stored in the capacitor is exactly half of this value. So what's happened to the other half of this energy supplied? Well, as during charging, as charge accumulates on the plates, more work is done to store further charges on the plates. And that's because there's electrostatic repulsion that has to be overcome between the charges that are coming onto the plate and the charges that are already on the plate. So half the energy supplied by the battery is need to do this work. One use of capacitors is in a camera flash. The battery in the camera can charge the capacitor to a very high voltage so that it stores a lot of energy and then it can the capacitor can be discharged very quickly so it releases this energy very quickly so it produces a very large power needed to produce the flash for the camera another use of capacitors is to power lasers needed for nuclear fusion so you can have a large number of capacitors charged to a, a very high voltage and then you can quickly discharge the capacitor to produce a lot of power and that power could power the lasers to produce the intense flash that can force hydrogen nuclei together so that they can fuse to form helium nuclei and the process of fusion releases energy. The only problem is it's not a viable energy source because it requires far more energy to create the discharge in the capacitor than what is gained from the fusion reaction. And another use of capacitors is as a backup power supply 
or computers. So while your computer or laptop is on, then the capacitors will be charged. And then if there's a power cut, then the capacitors will come in use so that it will allow for data to be saved and to shut down the computer or laptop safely.